here at the ID Tech X here in Berlin and uh, who are you? I'm Andy Fuchs and I'm running the Toyota representative office here in Berlin. So uh, Toyota is uh, the number one for hybrid, right? Well, I, I, I think with 8.7 uh, million vehicles that we have on the road, it's difficult to not claim that we have quite a leadership position as we already started 20 years ago when probably other OEMs had a slightly different perspective. But today, well, I think more and more companies join us and I think uh, this is the key important message because uh, we're all moving in the same direction to make mobility more sustainable. And uh, a bunch of companies, maybe also Toyota doing electric and then the next thing, is it fuel cell? The next thing, probably not, it's already there. So, so we have both, because I think um, it's fair to say, due to the climate changes we all can witness and experience ourselves, we see there is a requirement to do change. We started 20 years ago with our hybrid strategy, uh, developing vehicles that uh, already integrated batteries to, uh, to a lower emissions and reduce obviously then also consumption. We have now the widest range. And so we have bat purely battery electric vehicles and now fuel cell in the market as well. Battery vehicles we didn't bring here to Europe because we see the market is still difficult. But on fuel cell we see a much bigger potential as obviously um, here in the energy change that is happening, particularly in Germany but in many other countries where renewables get a more important role, we see here that uh, fuel cell vehicles will play a major function in being the first customer of these renewable energies stored in hydrogen. Is the advantage of uh, fuel cell hydrogen, is the advantage that you can have more range and you can, you can refill very quickly and you can produce it close to all the renewable uh, close to the wind farm and uh, close to the solar and everything and then transport it over to all the... You hit it on the nail on the head, so to say, um, because what the consumer today wants, and we have a more consumer-centric approach, he wants mobility. So, and fuel cell is uh, offering you exactly that. It gives you a 500 kilometer range. You have refueled the car within three minutes, so when you go on a trip or you have to travel longer distance, you don't have to wait for a long recharging. And as you just mentioned as well, in the energy change, um, we will have already today a significant amount of wind parks where we can convert hydrogen into uh, convert energy into green hydrogen and use this green hydrogen as a fuel for our vehicles. So in a way. If we put down silos and we break a little bit um, the traditional view on how energy was used, that it's only a petrol for vehicles and all that, and there was other forms of energy for households, all this will come together much closer because it will be all electric and the possibility we see is that hydrogen is playing a major role. And uh, is it easy to transport hydrogen around? Is it going to be a network? Uh, how long is it going to take to set it up? You had like you just had a presentation. What are we talking about? Sorry, I asked yeah. so many things. Well, um, in a way, you know, we're only at the beginning. So, so by mid end of this year, we expect about 50 hydrogen stations all over Germany, which will allow you already to travel from north to south, east to west, and all that. And the supply is obviously secured because um, there are investors like Lindy, Air Liquide, Shell, Total that from the infrastructure side, uh, setting up all the, the functionalities that through trucking, because that's the most likely, but there's also on-site electrolyzers. We have in Hamburg, for example, stations where you produce your hydrogen on-site, because they see, for example, when on the energy market, electricity is cheap. They turn on the electrolyzer and produce uh, hydrogen, green hydrogen, directly on-site. So there's a multitude of uh, solutions currently correct, mostly struck in, but there's a distribution on national level and um, the customer can be sure that he's not running out when he comes to the filling station. So a truck will be able to have a lot of hydrogen inside? Yes. And that can fill up a whole station with, with enough for uh, thousands of cars to go through and fill up and... Well, so, so far we don't have the issue with thousands of cars because we are just at the beginning of uh, a revolution probably. Um, as um, there are not too many uh, cars currently that you can purchase. And obviously the market is only developing, but there, there is today already hydrogen in German market, be it side product or 
anyway through through chemical industry available that could fuel more than 200,000 cars. Uh, obviously, this is not the green one we want for the future, but all the possibilities are there. And as said, 200,000 cars could fuel without any problem. And your uh, so you Toyota, but you're happy for all the other car companies. Is it going to be the same standard? Everybody's going to work in the same direction. All the cars are going to be compatible. And this is correct. If you follow the discussions when it comes to, for example, battery electric mobility and uh, just about the right plug and, and what direction to move forward, uh, I think we we had one big advantage here because here industry already agreed on common standards. So be Toyota. Daimler, BMW, Honda, there is one standard when it comes to this technology and refueling and all that and this on a global scale. So it's independent if the US, Japan or, or Germany, you talk about the same technology. And when you plug in to refuel, it's very safe, like does it, it locks in and just transfers in three minutes? Safety is mandatory. We couldn't go to market if we would have any concerns or doubts on, on the area of safety. But um, these stations are in the city center, for example, of, of the German cities. And authorities would never give a permission if there would be any risk. And therefore, it's fair to say it's clean, because obviously there's no oil or anything you can spill. You connect it and with three minutes, you have a, a fully filled car that is clean and safe. And pretty soon we'll have affordable uh, hydrogen fuel cell cars, mass, mar mass production? How soon? I, I think this is depending also a little bit developing of the market and how customers will pick up on that. Um, if you look, I, I think we offer a car here in the German market for 66,000 euro. And uh, if you look out on the market, uh, competitive vehicles, standard vehicles, are in the same price range. Okay, it's a mid-size limousine, and we are not totally out of a uh, proportion that people might think, oh my God, costs hundreds of thousands. You might ask for, because volumes are still small. We produce this year about 2,000. But in the coming years, economies of scale will get much more effect, and we see then probably in the years 2020-ish, 30,000 units, which further will help us to decrease prices. And the price of hydrogen compared to gas, how is it going to be? Is, is it supposed to be cheaper eventually? In Germany, obviously, it's a government-funded program because government is helping still to, to set up the, the, the basics and develop all the technologies to make sure customers have a great experience. So we have a kind of a set price of €9.50 per kilo, which is comparable to about uh, a normal gasoline car. So w w with 60 euro, you fill your car and you can r uh, have a range of 500 kilometers. So it's not expensive. Obviously, where the price will go in the future is depending also on a little bit ta taxation, because currently it's not taxed, uh, on how efficient and cost, uh, especially cost efficient, we can produce green hydrogen. But um, the predictions are really that after a couple of years with all technologies where you lose money, you will come to a situation where this is really a business proposition for all involved in this business. Is it possible that it will be a bunch cheaper than gas? I think this is a little bit looking too much into the glass ball. Yeah. Uh, we have to see because technology is making big progress and uh, this is also depending on the integration of renewable, how quick this is working. But everything is possible. Uh, ingenuity is great and uh, you know we are only at the beginning. We see this technology as a technology that will really lead us for the next hundred years and if you look back at the very first vehicle that was invented also here in Germany and the first station there which uh, was uh, a pharmacy you don't want to compare the costs as well and what a tremendous progress industry has made in these years. So I think there are lots of possibilities there is engineering knowledge, and I think it just needs uh, now to spark up and more people to get in to make it uh, a sustainable business for the future. And just one thing, there's a rule, is there a rule that all the hydrogen has to be totally from renewable source? There is not a rule yet. Uh, currently we have about 50% here in Germany because obviously the cost for purely 100% uh, renewable would be still high and there's a lot of byproduct which we utilize. But the target, obviously, because we have all set and agreed uh, the, the COP21 agreement in Paris, we have to reduce fossil fuels and this is one path forward. And Hydrogen is one of the solutions to help us in getting green mobility for the future.